Hello. Good evening. How are you doing? How was your week? My name is Miriam. And welcome to today's Bible reading. And the last Sunday I was unable to, to show up. But I thank God I'm here today. Let me just get this out of the way. This is the month of May. <laughs> this is the month of my birthday. So we are going to have a very deep discussion about that. And um, I'm going to let you know how you're going to be a part of it. <laughs> it's going to be fun for sure. All right. Um, <clears throat> today I am going to read the Bible for us but before i do that i would like for us to pray father bless the reading of your word for us in the name of jesus so today's bible reading is um it is part of a story that we are very familiar with and that story is the story of the death and resurrection of lazarus who was referred to as the friend of Jesus. So we are familiar with uh, how Lazarus died. He was buried before Jesus was able to make his way down there. And he called him forth from the death back to life. There's something interesting about that story. In fact, everything about that story is very interesting. But I want to remind us of this very verse. John chapter 11, verse 40. John 11, verse 40. I'm going to read. Jesus replied, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? That was a question. Jesus was asking Martha, when, let me reverse uh, 39. Take away the stone, Jesus said. And then Martha interjected. Lord, by now he stinks, said Martha, the sister of the dead man. It has already been four days. So you see, it was an interesting conversation, an exchange. Martha, first of all, was complaining. She was angry with Jesus. In a way, she was saying to Jesus, my brother wouldn't have died if you were here. So it's like saying, what's the essence of our friendship? You've always come to our house. You've been our family friend. But the one day that we needed you, you couldn't show up. So at that point, Jesus knew that Martha did not see him for who he is. Martha was very comfortable with Jesus as their friend. He was a friend of Lazarus, her brother, and also their friend. Their family friend. So it was kind of hard for Martha to, to get out of a comfort zone of Jesus, my brother's friend, to Jesus, the honor of life and death. So when Jesus tried to convince Martha that Lazarus was going to come back to life, it didn't work. So Jesus said, you know what? Let me just show her. Even at that point, when he, he said, he said, where was he laid down? They took him to the tomb, the grave of Lazarus. And he already given an instruction for people to remove the stone that was used to cover the grave. Martha still stepped and said, you know what? What's the point? Don't bother. And then Jesus asked her a question in verse 40. Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? That is where we have problem. Sometimes we pray to God for something. Sometimes we trust God for something. But we don't believe. Of course, Martha knew who Jesus was. He was the son of God. 
So Martha was comfortable with that, with that gospel. Some of us, we don't have problem going to church. Some of us, we don't, we don't have problem with the Bible. Of course, there is God, there is Jesus. But we are just still stuck in God being limited to that book, the Bible, that we find it so difficult to see God, to see the word of God as a living, breathing person. So it's like, we grab our Bible. Let me show you something. So this is our Bible. We believe in it. It's the word of God. We open it. For God so loved the world. We close it. We just read the Bible. We open it. For this sign, Mark chapter 16. For this sign shall follow the that belief. In my name, you will heal the sick. Huh. In the name of Jesus, I'm healed. But we don't believe. Some of us, that's the kind of Christian we are. Our faith is locked up in the pages of the scripture. We find it so hard, so difficult to bring the word of God out from the pages of the scripture. We just lock it up there. It's the word of God. It's the Bible. We reverend the Bible. Of course, we respect the Bible. We, we respect God. And we, we know that the, the word of God is true as it, as it is written in the Bible. But we just find it difficult to cross over to the other side of understanding that the word is alive. That's where Martha got stopped. It was hard for her to look at Jesus. It's like, last week when you were hungry, after your daily routine, you came to our house, you ate. And this one time that we needed you, I sent a message. Of course, the new Jesus can heal the sick. He heals so many sick people. They're aware of that. They're very comfortable with Jesus the healer. But the, the, there was another level of God that God wanted Martha to experience. But her unbelief was holding her back. In the book of Revelation, the, the, John said, and the angel that was a come up hither. Some of us, we are still stuck here. Read your Bible. Pray every day if you want to grow. We are still here in the elementary. We don't want to go up higher. Every time God wants to give you a test, every time God wants to test your faith, God wants to test your understanding of who he is. Every time God wants to test how well do you know him, you just crawl back into your hole. You say, Lord, that if you had done it yesterday, you see now, Jesus was like, Martha is me. Yeah, I know you can heal. No, no, no. I can resonate too. I'm the resurrection, resurrection in life. I, I understand. You know, when you come back, just like, no, 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 no. This is not when you come back thing. It is a noun thing. Our unbelief pushes our testimony forward. The things that God wants to do for you now. He, he's trying so hard to, 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 to just let you know see, that now is appointed time to you. According to the time of, time of man, it's 24 hours for you. But the time of God, no. It's not a 24 hours thing. And Martha was arguing. Now let's remove Martha's name from this story. Put your name in it. How many times do you argue with God? How many times do you feel like God is late? Oh God, you, could, you should have done it last year. It's supposed to have happened two years ago. It's supposed to have happened last month. Now I'm late. There is no point. Oh, now I'm not qualified. God is like, mm, Miriam, Miriam, Miriam. Did I not tell you that if you believe in me, you will see my glory. That was what God said. If you had believed, 
you would have seen the glory of God. You see, by the time Lazarus was raised, if you read down the story, Martha was still in that state. Jesus, I know you can heal. Now my brother is dead. I know there's resurrection in the future. Jesus was like, no. How about now? There is resurrection now. You see, that thing that you feel is too late. That thing that you feel like God is late. That thing that you are angry with God for. God is saying to you, mm -mm, that was your time. Now is my time. I'm going to believe. I'm going to do it. If we did not, if we do not, if Martha did not allow doubt and complacency to feel and occupy her thoughts, she wouldn't be fighting and arguing with Jesus. If we do not allow doubt, complacency, looking at other people, hey, this one was two days, hey, this one was one day, hey, mine is one week. It's not going to work. <clears throat> if you believe that this same God says, my word is here and amen. If you believe that when you open this scripture, you read, Jesus said, whatsoever you ask of my father in my name, he will do it. That the father might be glorified. If you believe that, that means whatsoever you ask God, as long as it's something within his will, his plans for you, you will get it. So you, when you get it, it shouldn't be the issue anymore. Because the problem that Martha had here was the when. To her, Jesus was late. So it doesn't matter if he was here or not. You might as well not show up. But Jesus was trying to explain to her, Martha, your time is not my time. You wanted me to come and heal your brother. But God wanted me to come and raise him up. If Jesus had came before the time he came, Lazarus would not have been a dead man brought back to life. It would have been a man who was another man who was seriously sick. God doesn't want it to be another candidate, another employee, another man, another woman. God wants you to be the one. The man that was dead. Verse 39 says, Martha, the sister of the dead man. You see, now Lazarus has been upgraded from Lazarus to the dead man. God has something specific, something unique, something peculiar just for you. But if you are not careful if you dwell so much in doubt and the what if you're gonna become another whereas God wanted you to be the one that's right it says for I know the thoughts that I have for you so if you believe in the word of God, when you open the pages of the scripture, you either you read it yourself or somebody's reading it to you or you heard somebody talking about it. If you believe in the pages of the scripture and you happen to stumble upon Jeremiah 29, 11, where God declares it, for I know the thought that I have for you, thoughts of good and not of evil, then you should go to sleep. You should rest your mind. You shouldn't be like a Martha. You shouldn't be, we, we, we shouldn't be challenging God for being late. Remember, he said, though it tarries, it will not be late. That means even though in your eyes it looks like it's late, but as far as I'm concerned, I will be there on time. That should tell us something. 
that the time of God and our time is not the same. When Martha said, by now he stinks, Jesus said, roll the stone. When Martha was busy, like, what are you doing? You know what, just, it's okay. I, I mean, I always accepted it. He will wake up in 20 years when you come back, whenever you come back, that's why Jesus was like, Martha, get out of my way. I'm here to do the will of my father. You see, Mary on the other end, Mary did not care. Mary was just happy Jesus was here. Lazarus thinking, Lazarus did not stink. Jesus, at least you are here. What can you do? So we need to have the heart of a Martha. Oh, excuse me, Mary. Doesn't matter how long it takes. The thought that God has for you is of good and not of evil. To bring you an expected end. Remember, this expected end is not your expected end. It's the expected end of God. The expectation that God has for you. What God has is in mind for you to do. What the reason God created you, the purpose of your creation, is what the Bible is referring to here. To give you an expected end. I mean, you didn't create yourself. Don't you get it? The Bible said, no, you're not. I created you. In the book of Psalms, it said, I created you. God created you. You did not create yourself. So if God created you, he had a reason. And it might not be anything compared to what you know or what you think. So when you, you, you are busy in your mind, when I'm busy in my mind trying to create a reality for myself that is not in the blueprint of God for me. Martha wanted to create a reality. I know when you come back, Lazarus was going say, mm, just as, no, you still don't get it. I mean, now. I mean, he's going to wake up now. Roll the stone. He called him out. When God is saying this is going to happen now, in our mind, we're thinking five years from now. Oh, yeah, I, I mean, it always takes five years. Oh, this person took two. So he said, yeah, I'll give it another three years. God is like, no, no, Miriam, I'm going to do it now. We need to learn to believe God. Not man. For some reason, we find it easy to believe men. We find it easy to believe other people. But we find it very difficult to believe God. When God said, I'm going to do this thing, we find it hard. Is he going to do it? I mean, you know how God does things. It might take him a while to show up. But he said, I will do it. He said, I will bless the work of your hand. He said, I have your name written in the palm of my hand. Jesus said, those that come to me, when they believe in me, I hand them back to the Father. He puts them in his hand. See this thing here? Where no one can uproot them. That's the word of God. But sometimes this is what we do. We open it. We read it. We close it. And we think that's, that's the end of it. No. Take the word with you. Not carry your Bible with you. Take the word. Take the word. The word is a person. The word of God is a person. Take him with you. Believe in the word. Trust in the word. Speak the word. Live the word. Breathe the word. So that when Satan is coming to tell you, well, at least you've tried. I mean, you've been believing in God for the past two months. I don't think God will be offended if you don't believe in him anymore. After all, I mean, it's not even that difficult to do this thing. Yeah, if you had called this person, he would have done it for you. Yeah, 
you you he is stressing yourself, trusting God. You could have just called your dad, call your mom, call your sister, call your brother, call your mom, call your children. They could have done this thing for you. And you're busy trusting God. And then we're like, you know what? Yeah, what was I even thinking? I mean, I have faith in God. After all, God is gonna use a human being to help me. Yeah. See, that's how we start. Until we become a full blown martyr arguing with God up and down. Jesus asked Martha the question, Did I not tell you? So I said, You, this girl, didn't I tell you that if you believe in me, you will see the glory of God? We see the glory of God in other people's lives. And we look at our lives and say, God is not doing things. No. We need to get out of the way. Ah, it's things. You could have you should have done it two years ago. It's four days now. God said to Martha, get out of the way. Martha, get out of the way. Let me do the work of he that called me. When Jesus was told that Lazarus was sick, he said, This sickness is not unto death. People can say, Hey, you lied, eh? But you said it wasn't unto death. The guy is dead now. You see the way of God and the word of God how it works? That sickness is not unto death, it's unto the glory of God. Okay. Boom. He's dead now. Can you now say he's dead? Just that, nope. He's sleeping. <laughs> nope. <laughs> he's sleeping. That's so why we have to be careful what we say. Even when things don't make sense. If you don't know what to say, just say, Lord, I still trust you. Because Satan wants you to say something that he will use against you. You see, even Martha, her own brother, don't believe you. Oh, Martha doesn't believe you. Jesus had to prove to Martha that what God said, can happen now, even though it sounds like it was a tomorrow statement. I know in the future you will wake up just like, no, I mean now. That means they had this conversation before. Jesus said, did I not tell you? It's like, did I not tell you that if you believe? So let me ask us a question. How many times do we do this? I know I do it a lot. I don't know about you guys. God would tell me, calm down. I'm going to fight this. I'm fighting this battle for you. I'm going to fight this battle for you. you know, okay. One, two, three, four. So God, what do you think? Ah, this thing is too much. Ah, this thing is taking too long. God, is, did I not tell you I will fight your battle? Oh yeah, you did. Okay. We gonna sit down like uh, the the seconds of a clock. Tick 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 tick. One minute. Ah, God, <laughs> you have done this to me. <laughs> and then we cry and cry and cry. And then I will hear that voice. Didn't I tell you I will fight it? Oh yeah, you did. And we gonna sit down there like this, looking at the clock. Tick tick tick. Ah, God, God, oh God, please don't forgive me. We need to stop. I said we, including myself. So I'm telling to myself, Mira, you need to stop. <laughs> When God says he's got you, he's got you. God said that I will not be put to shame. That's exactly what it means. God said he will bless the work of my hand. He's going to be blessed. It might take a while, but it will be blessed. God said with long life will I satisfy. That means I'm not going to die young. You see, take the word with you. Don't open, read, close, and abandon. That's what we do. Open, read, abandon. Open, read, abandon. No, take the word with you. Martha, did I not tell you? So I said, didn't I warn you? You did. You don't listen. How many times have I told you that believe? You will see the glory of God. I don't know what God has told you. I don't know what others have told you. But this is what I know. That we tend to have a very good memory of what others are saying compared to what God is saying. 
We need to change that. Martha was upset. She felt betrayed that Jesus did not come. He's supposed to have come. You should have dropped everything. I don't care where you were. After all, you are a friend. You should have come. You're supposed to come. <laughs> oh yeah, I say it to God. I say, God, you should have done this. You, should not, you shouldn't have allowed me to go through this thing. God said, all of that doesn't matter. Martha, I'm here now. Martha was like, nope, I don't think so. You're late. You are late. Just admit it. <laughs> Just admit it, you're late. We need to learn to believe the first voice. That voice that says, I've got this. That first voice that says, let not your heart be troubled. That first voice that said, I died for you. That first voice that said to you, all things will work out for your own good. That first voice that said, let me teach your Pharaoh a lesson. When God said to Moses, take this people around the other side. I must have my honor over Pharaoh. Let God have his way. Let him teach some Pharaoh, some stubborn pursuer, some lesson that they won't forget anytime soon. Let God teach your enemy some bitter lessons. Say this one, you see this one here? This one is mine. Back off. Hold on to that voice. Some of us, we remember so much what others are saying that we even forget what God said about a situation. If that's you, step on the pedal. Stop. Stop. Do you really believe God is going to do it? Do you really believe that he's going to come through? He will. He has never failed. He's not going to start with you. But guess what? It will happen in his own way, in his own time, not years. Not years. I mean, when Jesus died on the cross, what was honorable about the cross? After all, they hung him naked. I don't even know if he had six pack or not. But today, could you imagine the glory? People say, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Lord, I love you, worshiping God. Who cares how he was hung on the cross anymore? You see, let God handle the detail. Don't worry about how is this going to happen. Remember, Zechariah asking the angel too many questions. I don't think so. Are you sure? This has never happened, especially in my family. This thing has never happened to anyone. The angel, you know what? I think your, your mouth is your problem. I'm going to... So when the baby comes, you will talk. Let it not get to that point that God will have to mute us. To have temporary loss of ears. <laughs> ah, my eye is affecting me. <laughs> Let it not go to that level. Doubts. Unbelief. If you believe that voice that God said to you initially, you will see the glory. See, that thing you're looking for will start looking for you. We were not meant to pursue some things. They were meant to pursue us. Deuteronomy 28. Don't go after things that you're not going to catch. Things that were supposed to follow you. By the time you want to pursue those things, that means you are behind. If blessing was supposed to pursue you, money was supposed to pursue you, now you are pursuing money, guess what? You are behind. Because you were supposed to be in front and then money will pursue you. Did God not tell you that if you believe, you will see his glory? Man, <laughs> man will disappoint you. Even the best person because we have enemy of humanity, death. 
Somebody can tell you, oh, tomorrow definitely I'm coming with you. They go to bed today, don't wake up. Who's you going to blame? I can't believe he didn't come. Well, he's dead. But the one person that can never fail is God. Believe and you will see his glory. Forget about what others are saying. Hold on to what he said. When you open his word and you read the pages of his word, don't close and abandon. Take it with you. Meditate. God said to Joshua, this book of the Lord should not depart. Meditate on it day and night. That means carry the word. Speak the word. Break the word. Live the word. Think about the word. Become the word. And it shall be well with you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Because in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was made manifest in flesh to dwell among men. Lord, I know that it's difficult for us to hold on to things that we can't see. It's just human nature. But by faith, we will hold on to it. I pray for anyone, everyone that has lost all hope, like Martha did. They weren't sure anymore. There are somebody thinking, is God even real? Does God care? There are people that have been pushed, tucked in to a corner. That they can't even break free. There are people that no matter how hard they try. Help is not coming. Father. By your mercy. May you locate. The oppressed. The confused. The lost. They that are giving up. They that have turned their back, let your mercy locate them. Just like the shepherd left the 99 sheep looking for the one that was lost. But those whose faith are on the brinks of collapse, please stretch, ahead, stretch out your hand of mercy and rescue them in the name of Jesus. Those that are still standing, Lord, may you encourage your faith. Every prolonged blessing, prolonged prayer point, prolonged affliction and oppression and expectation. Father, let today be that day when you say to Martha, get separate the way, roll the stone. It's not too late. Whatever has been considered late in the time of man, to you, it's not late. Father, show forth and show up in a glorious way. To the glory of your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Lord, this week I commit your children unto you. Let your hand of protection be upon your children. May you go ahead of us. May you straighten every crooked path. This week, there shall be no loss of life in the household of faith. When your people are going out, Lord, you will go out with them. When they are coming back, you will come back with them. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Again, my name is Miriam. Please share the video. I will see you again some other time. Bye-bye.